learning about each other. This is, uh, this is the process. It's just, you know, just can't roll out the balls and say, hey, go play. Go play well together. So every outing is important for the Bronco development. And Malik McMillan wins the tip back for Western Michigan. The Broncos at 1-1 one and one in the season. They won their home opener against Hope. They go into the post right away with Hastings and some nice moves. Western Michigan on the board first. That's a good, uh, that's a good sign that they were able to score in the paint. Maurice Barnett gives over for James Tui, the senior guard from Australia, now to the top with Tyler Witz, the forward who transferred from the Division I level with North Dakota State, and Barnett with a nice jumper along two to tie it up. Joe, let's take a look at your keys to the game. Okay, well, for, uh, for, well, Here's yeah, well, for Saginaw, I think it's important for them to be close at the half. They've got to get off to a good start in this first half. And uh, for that to happen, they need to value the ball. They gave the ball up 16 times against Olivet last night and resulted in 21 fast break points. So they need to take care of the rock, as they say. And for Western and, Michigan. And, and for Western, I think it's important for them to establish their defensive intensity early so that the uh, Division II school doesn't think they're going to come in here and just run their stuff uh, willy-nilly. James Tui had and, it pop out. And the second part of their uh, key to the game is solid point guard play. Uh, with B. Artis White not being available, it's important for them to get uh, some, some good minutes from Adrian Martin and Gus Edgerson. Here's McMillan. He swishes, swishes it home. Four-point lead for Western Michigan early. And the transfers coach making an impact early. Hastings with four and McMillan now on the board. The good sign there was Malik did not hesitate. He caught the ball, squared, and shot it. And uh, looked smooth. Barnett on the outside, as you mentioned, he transferred from the College of Southern Idaho, originally from Chicago. Here's Delano Smith, under 10 on the shot clock. Contested jumper off the back iron, and Hastings with the rebound for the Broncos, who look to run. Now Martin in the lane, he draws a foul. Well, that was good that uh, Adrian decided to press the issue there. You'll notice that the two Smith guys that we focused uh, on on our, on our opening... Uh, there's a foul on Adrian there. He'll get two shots. They're guarding each other at, at, at either end, Connor. So it'll be interesting to see how uh, Delano Smith guards uh, Max Smith and vice versa. That's the first foul on Delano Smith as Adrian Martin heads to the free throw line. And you said it. He needs to step up with B. Artis White out. He's going to get a lot of opportunities to start at the point guard spot. Yeah, and he's, he's certainly capable. You know, he's, he's now uh, in the stage of development where... Uh, uh, he should be uh, really relishing this opportunity. Martin throughout his career has been known as a defensive specialist, a stopper on that end of the floor for the Broncos, but certainly needs to step up offensively as well in the absence of White. Well, every club needs a, a good general out there, and he's the floor general that's at this point. Barnett oh buries a three. Mo Barnett. Well, that's his second one. He's starting to feel good. Keeps it going from last night against Olivet when he was four for six from beyond the arc. Well, that stems the tide a little bit for Saginaw. Let's see if they, they're going to try to bear down here and get a defensive stop. McMillan tries a long two off target, and Barnett with the rebound. A deep three from Barnett. Now that was a heat check. <laughs> Gratefully for the Broncos, he didn't, he didn't uh, successfully hit that shot. He was really feeling it. Lamar Norman Jr. on the outside. The transfer from Duquesne tried to find McMillan, and it's taken away. Eventually ends up with Barnett. Yeah, Lamar had a nice drive there, but uh, just couldn't connect with uh, his inside player. Deep three on the way from Hoskins. Out of bounds. And it was last touched by Western Michigan. As we see, both teams have some subs come on. Freddie McIntosh, freshman guard, and Tyreek Singh, the junior forward, come on for Saginaw Valley. Danny Culp, the junior forward for Western Michigan, comes on. Just from the early goings here, it looks like Saginaw is not bashful about shooting the deep ball. They're, they're, I mean, they've taken quite a few threes already. They made 13 of them last night against Olivet. It was an 84-73 win. So the Cardinals playing on back-to-back -back nights. Shot clock winding down. That pass out of bounds. So it's back to Western Michigan. 
So it looked like Western uh, initially was going to pull away, you know, with a 7-2 lead, but uh, Saginaw's uh, uh, responded, so they, they've, they've kind of gotten past the first flurry, Connor. And we spoke with head coach Randy Bruth. He said they're not going to be intimidated. They know it's a step up going to the Division One level, but they're not treating this game any differently than playing a GLIAC school or playing any other school in the state of Michigan. Yeah, just by their body language and, uh, and their faces, it looks like they're ready to play tonight. Now we'll see if they can sustain it after having played a, a full ball game last night. Elijah Harrison picked up the foul for Saginaw Valley State. Freshman guard out of Tampa. Yarno Palmstra just entered. The seven-footer from the Netherlands. Listed at 7-2. He's guarding Danny Culp of Western Michigan. Under 10 on the shot clock for Smith. Long two. Left it short. Good back and forth between Saginaw Valley and Western Michigan to start. The Broncos ahead by two early in Kalamazoo. Canberra, Australia, Chicago, Illinois, Tampa, Florida. They're coming from all over. And talking with Coach Baruth, he mentioned it was a very diverse roster for Saginaw Valley State. Players from right in Saginaw, but also, as we talked about there, all over the world. Harrison keeps it alive for Saginaw Valley. We have a stoppage here. I think they want to check on the shot clock. Yeah, whether they uh, should get a reset. Pomster will try a three oh and my. banks it home. Oh, they, I don't think he called that bank shot, but it went in. <laughs> well, he got a little lucky on that one. Uh, Coach Peruth did mention you don't find many seven-footers that can shoot it that are Americans that would play at the Division II level. Palmstra coming over from the Netherlands, a big part of this Cardinals team coming off the bench. Here's Danny Culp. Under 10 on the shot clock for Lamar Norman Jr. He fires up a three. Off the back iron, but an offensive rebound for Hastings. Now Smith will try. Another offensive rebound, and Culp is fouled. Good work on the offensive board by Danny Culp. That was not an easy one to go get. He had to go get that range rebound. So we take another look at this rebound by Culp. Yeah, that, that was uh, good work. That was a good read off the off the uh, rim there. The Broncos have missed a couple, two or three open jump shots. Uh, they're going to need to hit those in order to build the lead. Second foul on Elijah Harrison as Titus Wright checks in. 6'8", junior, out of Thomasville, Georgia. It's nearly stripped away by McIntosh. Cameron Kimball, the freshman for Western Michigan, with the ball as he entered. Now Culp. Nice, nice move with the little baby hook. Very nice. He got to his spot on the floor and turned. He knew where he was at. Nice swish shot. Danny Culp, transfer from Northwood University. He came for the Division II level. He brings some size and some depth to this Western Michigan roster. Joined the team last season. Barnett hoists the three. That's short. Offensive rebound. McIntosh, and he draws a foul. Now, as much as I praise Danny Culp at the one end, uh, down at that, they really needed to wrap up that defensive position for the Broncos. Saginaw stole an extra possession there. Yep, that uh, good hands by the guard. So McIntosh at the free throw line. Hometown kid out of Saginaw. Played for Saginaw High School. He was first team All State, and that's a really great basketball town. Saginaw, really has Michigan. got a proud tradition. Now, let me tell you. Uh, and uh, you see both coaches getting most of their roster on the floor in the first half. As Saginaw Valley State is playing a back to back, and for Western Michigan, when we spoke with Clayton Bates, he mentioned that this is a team that's really still trying to find their identity. So this early in the season, you're still trying to figure out your rotation. Yes, that's exactly right. Tight defense for McIntosh on Adrian Martin. 
and an offensive foul off the ball. Well, Titus Wright got his elbows up a little bit, and uh, here we come. He's working in there to try to establish position, and uh, Adrian Martin's looking at him, but uh, they really could not get himself established in there without uh, thrashing his arms a little bit, and they called him on the offensive side of the ball. Matched up against Tyler Witts, very experienced player coming from North Dakota State. Broncos trying to turn up the defensive pressure. Barnett can't hit the three, and Lamar Norman Jr. with the rebound. Now he looks to run. Norman Jr. to the bucket. Offensive rebound, and the Broncos will reset things. Titus Wright kept that ball alive, so maintains possession for the Broncos. They feed Culp, working against Barnett. That swirled all the way around the cylinder, but it came out, unfortunately, for Culp. Mo Barnett with some nice moves. He gets to the rack. He recognized who was guarding him there in that transition defense and drove the big center. Danny Culp uh, really kind of left him standing there. Good recognition by Barnett. And Maurice Barnett showing he's not just a shooter. Now Martin tried to find right. It's taken away. The Cardinals have an opportunity in transition. And McIntosh had it tipped out of bounds. It will stay with the Cardinals as Gus Etchison, freshman guard, will check in for Western Michigan. Delano Smith comes back on for Saginaw Valley. It's like both teams are, fin are, are sort of, uh, you know, trying to find their, their level here. Neither team has really settled into, in, into an offensive rhythm. Hoskins buries the three. He ran their baseline out of bounds play, and he rubbed off his defender. Got an open J. Lead up to five for Saginaw Valley State. Cardinals not intimidated at all coming up from the Division II level to take on Western Michigan. Culp lost it. It will stay with the Broncos. I'd like to see the Broncos uh, try to go side to side with the ball a little bit to try to get the, the Saginaw defenders out of position. Right now, it just seems like they're attacking one side of the floor. And you're much easier to guard if that's all you're doing, just keeping the ball on one side of the floor. Inbound for the baseline from the Broncos. That's better. Oh, Tried to find Culp, and he lost it. Barnett gets a screen from Witz. Let the shot clock drain down. Now he'll try a three. And the rebound to Kimball. Oh, now that time against size, Barnett decided to take the jump shot instead of drive it. We've seen him do a little bit of both. Gus Etchison, the freshman, scored over 2,000 points in his high school career. Max Smith had his three blocked. And Witz comes away with it. Barnett closed very strongly on that uh, jump shot by Smith. Got a piece of it. Now Delano Smith into some traffic. He draws a foul. So Delano Smith will have an opportunity at the free throw line after this. Saginaw Valley State playing very well. The Cardinals on the road with a five-point lead. With patience, really. Uh, <laughs> So virtually, you know, these are obviously, uh, although 1993, Western men went on to get to the next championship game. So that might augur well for uh, the Broncos this season. Yeah, Western Michigan hoping maybe that's some sort of good omen playing against Saginaw Valley. You know, one of the things we uh, emphasize is uh, that Saginaw needed to get off to a good, solid start, handle the ball carefully. Uh, right now, the Broncos have four turnovers and Saginaw only has one. It was nearly another possession as that rebound was batted around. It is a 7-0 run for Saginaw Valley State, and they have a six-point lead. Hastings, under 10 on the shot clock, spinning his way out to Smith. 4-3, he got it. Good rhythmic play, inside, outside. Jump shooters love that kind of action. It's important for Smith to get going, and as well as Lamar Norman when he gets back on the floor. 
So that ends the Saginaw Valley State run. Max Smith made three threes against Michigan State. Now Delano Smith looking to respond. He was fouled shooting a three. So now he'll head to the free throw line. So that was a case of an experienced senior kind of baiting the freshman into a foul there. I think Delano Smith has been around the block, and he, he's very clever. Delano Smith earlier this season had 27 in the opener for Saginaw Valley against number seven at the Division II level, Hillsdale. That was a loss for the Cardinals, their only loss of this season. But head coach Randy Baruth said that Delano Smith reminds him a lot of a player who previously played for Saginaw Valley State, Damon Bozeman. He was a part of that team that led the Cardinals to the Elite Eight five years ago. Well, it's high praise. He knows he knows uh, the guys that have contributed the most to his program. Smith did miss two out of three. That's helpful. Uh, Broncos definitely need uh, some offensive execution like they got the last trip down. You see Etchison, the freshman, running the point with Martin on the bench. Well, that was a set play with a double down screen for Norman, but didn't free him for an open shot. Hastings, shot clock winding down to five. And this is going to be a shot clock violation. They'll play on as Saginaw Valley State had already taken it away. And that three is rattled home from Delano Smith. He's a step up jump shot. Nice uh, pass from the guard that just gave Delano a free look. The lead up to seven. Western Michigan has four turnovers. Make it five in the last five minutes. That was partially the uh, Saginaw getting their hand in there and knocking the ball away. Hoskins. Elbow jumper. He knocks it down. Uh, Broncos are going to have to call a timeout here and stop the bleeding. It's a nine-point lead. Clayton Bates will have them play on. And now they will call a timeout. What a first half for yeah. Saginaw Valley State. Division one school, they're just playing basketball. Not at all. A nine-point lead for the Cardinals. With just over nine minutes to go in the first half. Tried to feed Hastings and a foul. And it looks like the Broncos are trying to run their offense from the inside out. That is, let's take a, let's take a good look inside to see if we can get the ball down in there. And even if we don't shoot it on a post move, we can kick it out to a jump shooter. I think that's sound. Now, let's see if they can execute it. That foul was on Tyreek Singh, his first. Norman thought about the step back three. Has it taken away by Hoskins in transition. Hoskins off the backboard too strong. And now Norman will run the other way. Lamar Norman Jr. off the window and in. Nice drive and finish by uh, Lamar. He needed that. Now, Western Michigan's had some issues with turnovers, but do you think it would benefit them to speed this game up a bit? Well, yeah, I think so. You know, uh, judging by uh, the statistics from last night's game, you know, sometimes Saginaw doesn't get uh, back in transition defense all that well. Five on the shot clock. Tyler Witts had it roll out. Max Smith with the rebound. Broncos were fortunate there because Witts had an excellent thrust to the basket. And now Smith lost it. Little tie up on the floor. Jump ball. And possession arrow pointing the way of Saginaw Valley State. Yarno Palmstra will re-enter. You know, the impressive thing, Joe, is that Saginaw Valley State, you mentioned the substitutions, so they're doing this with their depth. And as a Division II school, it's very impressive to see. Yeah, and Western's trying to match them with, uh, you know, player for player, but unfortunately for the Broncos, they are not taking care of the basketball very well. well there's a potential travel, but no, no call. Smith drives the lane into some traffic. Good defense there for McMillan, and the rebound taken by Hastings. 
Martin. Now Delano Smith. Outlet pass, McIntosh, corner three, knocks it down. Nice unselfish play by Smith. He hit his teammate in the corner for the open jump shot. A 10-point lead for Saginaw Valley State, their largest of the night. That's important for Western not to panic, but, you know, to stay silent. Foul called off the ball on Delano Smith. Saginaw Valley State with a 10. The movies, he could be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> he's a great outside shooter, was four of six last night. He's just one for five tonight, but he has seven total. He's been able to score from the outside and the inside. And Hastings whistled for the travel. That is the ninth turnover for Western Michigan. That and the fact that Saginaw's five of 10 from three ball range, that, that's the difference in the game so far. Uh, I, I thought it might be the opposite, but Western's turning the ball over and Saginaw's taking care of it. Hoskins with the shot clock at 10. Drives the right side, takes some hard contact there from McMillan, and he'll head to the free throw line. Well, he was able to turn the corner, but then uh, Malik came over to help out. <laughs> Looks like he got a piece of him. Uh, yeah, there's the body there. The foul was charged to Lamar Norman Jr. That's his oh, first. Okay, well, that's, I guess that's a blessing in a sense. <laughs> Hoskins hits the first free throw. But the point is, Hoskins was able to get uh, Lamar on his, on his backside. I mean, he beat him around the corner. Darnell Hoskins Jr., very experienced player. Played at Victory Rock Prep in high school down in Florida. That was the same school that Lauren Christian Jackson, if you remember in the MAC, the Akron star played oh, at. Yes. His dad is the head coach there at Victory Rock Prep, so a little MAC connection. Well, Lauren Darnell Christian's Hoskins. a good player. A great player. Lamar Norman oh. Jr. buries a three. Much needed, much needed injection of uh, offense there for the Broncos. It'll help his confidence and also help the team's confidence to see if it if it has an effect on how hard they play defense this trip. Broncos certainly needed that. Almost. Norman now has five. Hoskins looking to respond. Well short. Tui keeps it alive, but Martin brings it the other way. Norman's feeling it. And he knocks down another. Okay. Here comes a little mini run for the Broncos. Let's see if they can sustain it on the defensive side of the ball. Six straight points for Lamar Norman Jr. And Western Michigan back within five. I am impressed by how Saginaw swings that ball from side to side. Wits working against Hastings and he finishes. Nah, that's too easy. From a Broncos standpoint, they need to resist that inside play a lot, a lot tougher. First points of the night for Tyler Witz. North Dakota State transfer. They call him Papa Witz. Very experienced player. Norman for McMillan. His three off target. Hastings had the offensive rebound. Tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Saginaw Valley. Good work by Marquise Hastings there. He kept the ball alive against two defenders. Kept the ball in the Broncos' possession. Trey Garrett, Tyreek Singh re-enter for Saginaw Valley State. Just over five minutes left in this first half. Cardinals with a seven-point lead. Norman will try another three. Why not? Yeah. I would say he's feeling it, uh, Connor. <laughs> Three for his last three how's, from beyond the arc. How's that for an astute observation? <laughs> now, can this can this rub off on their defensive intensity here? They need to stop. Uh, the Broncos need to keep the momentum on their side. Backdoor cut. Under 10 on the shot clock. McIntosh with the beautiful fallaway jumper. Good execution on the part of Saginaw there. They kept their poise and got themselves a nice open jump shot. Freddie McIntosh with six now. 
Max Smith, fade away. That's short. Trey Garrett will bring it the other way for the Cardinals with just over four minutes left in the first half. And a foul on the floor. That's the second on Lamar Norman Jr. So now he'll head to the bench, which is not good news for Western Michigan, considering just the only player getting, yeah. heating up. That's right. When he was a hot, a hot shooter here, we're going to have to find points elsewhere. I thought Max Smith's last jump shot was a little forced. James Tuohy on the outside gets all the way to the hoop. Well, he beat Josiah Freeman uh, pretty cleanly there for a layup. Tuohy, the senior from Australia. Head coach Randy Baruz said it's hard to find a better human being or a harder worker than James Tuohy. He's been a really big part of this program. And he's been around for a long time. JoJo Freeman lines up a three and hits. Okay, well, he, he answered and uh, got that back for his teammates there. Now let's see if we can D up here on uh, the other side of the floor. Offensive foul off the ball. That'll give it back to Western Michigan. The Broncos back within five, getting some great shooting from the outside. From Lamar Norman Jr. made three straight threes, but Saginaw Valley State still ahead. Three ball, but they, they haven't got enough shots because they're turning the ball over too often. Norman leads all scorers with 11. He had 23 in his Western Michigan debut last week against Hope. So he seems pretty comfortable at University Arena thus far in his career as a Bronco. They feed Titus Wright. Hit the side of the rim. Battle for possession, and the Cardinals come away with it with Singh. Foul off the ball. Marquise Hastings picks up his first foul. That's the seventh on Western Michigan as a team. So that will send Saginaw Valley State to the free throw line as Maurice Bennett re-enters. Tyler Witz, 9 for 12 from the free throw line this season, coming into tonight. You can see he's got a little of the salt and pepper look going. <laughs> that's right. Uh, and, and that's part of how he earned that nickname, Papa Witz. Papa Witz, With yeah. the gray hair and... He's, he's got that experience game coming from North Dakota State, and head coach Randy Bruth mentioned he just brings a level of calmness to this team with all that experience. Well, they've uh, they shot 11 free throws so far to the Westerns, two, which is another indication of who's the aggressor. He is back at seven for the Cardinals. Freeman spinning in the lane. He lost it. Tenth turnover on the part of the Broncos. They feed Wits again, working against Titus Wright. Wright got a hand in there. Tied up on the baseline, jump ball, possession arrow pointing the way of Western Michigan. It's a seven-point lead for Saginaw Valley State as we take a look. There's a scramble at this tie-up. For a while, there people didn't know what was going to happen next. Mm -hmm. um, they did call a tie uh, tie-up and possession arrow was for the Western. So just over two minutes left in this first half. Western Michigan trying to work their way back. Hastings drives the lane and draws a foul. That was a good, strong move on the part of Marquise going to the basket. You can't live off a jump shot all the time. There it is. Yeah, he, made him, he made Saginaw follow him there. That was a good move. That's the second on Tyreek Singh. Marquise Hastings, one of the four transfers.
came from Butler, played at Godwin Heights High School alongside Lamar Norman Jr., just up the road, right outside of Grand Rapids. They captured some magic and won a uh, Class B state championship while they were there. Yeah, it was a tremendous run for those two in their high school career. 89-9 and nine record for Godwin Heights when Hastings and Lamar Norman Jr. were part of that program. That's a lot of winning, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And they're not just playing small schools there. As you said, Class yeah. B, that's a pretty high level of basketball. Yeah, yes. Let's see how the two teams finish this first half. Barnett on the baseline, fall away jumper, hits the side of the rim, tipped out of bounds, last touch by the Cardinals. You know, uh, Maurice Barnett, he, he has kind of an old school jump shot where he puts that ball way in back of his head, so it's very difficult to, you can't block it, you just, you gotta try to, you know, distract him a little bit, but it's interesting, you don't see too many uh, guys shoot like that anymore. Is there anybody that that reminds you of? Well, you go way back to Dick <laughs> Barnett and, and the New York Knicks uh, out, of, out of Gary, Indiana, but not too many fans watching this game will remember that name. <laughs> well, another Barnett, though. How about that? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's how he found it. Etcherson will try a three. Oh, and nice And he play. rattles it home. That's a good flare screen. Got himself a good look and buried it. First points of the night for the freshman from Indiana. And it's a three-point game with under 120 to play in the half. Important possession here for the Broncos. See if they can build a little momentum at the end of the half. And an offensive foul will give it back to Western Michigan. Key defensive possession, Western Michigan comes away with a stop. Yeah, now, now the idea is to convert and see if they can at least get it even or maybe be a little bit ahead at the end of the half. That would be a, that'd be a major move forward. McIntosh whistled for extending that elbow. Timeout called by Sag, valuing possessions. When you have 10 turnovers, that's not really valuing the possession as much as Coach Bates would like. Now a reach-in foul on McIntosh. So he's picked up a quick two fouls. And Western Michigan's in the bonus there, so not a great foul there for McIntosh. Now, when you're coming from behind and you're trying to get back into the game score-wise, it's important to take these free throws, which are called free throws, but you have to make them <laughs> in order for that to cash in on the scoreboard. And it's a one-and-one, and, one, and he missed the first the front end, so that gives it back to Saginaw Valley State. Missed opportunity. And now a chance for the Cardinals potentially to go for a two-for-one, but they turn it over. So now Western Michigan, 16-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. I think they should just be concerned about running offense to get a good shot opportunity. Get a good shot or get fouled. Looks like that is what the Broncos are trying to do. Etchison outside for Smith, and he was on the end line. So another turnover for Western Michigan. Now, that's one of my pet peeves as an old-school traditionalist. You know, I used to coach eons ago, but they haven't changed the size of the court. You know, it's, it's 94 by 50, and yet there seems to be more and more of those occasions where people are stepping out of bounds on the sideline. Well, they have extended the three-point line, though, <laughs> which is part of it, although... <laughs> That's a, that's, a, that's a weak argument, O'Connor. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have the awareness, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Ten seconds left in the half for the Cardinals. Hoskins with a deep three and a foul. Three free throws coming up for Darnell Hoskins, Jr. You know, you know there's just a few Cardinal sins in the game of basketball, and one of them is following a three-point shooter in the act of shooting there. And I'm sure he thinks that he really didn't do much, but the official's standing right there. And, you know, the opponent's walking to the free throw line with, uh, with three shots, Mr. Hoskins. Made the first, so he has seven now. He's 
Trey Garrett checks back in for Saginaw Valley State. That's the second time in this first half that Western Michigan has fouled a three-point shooter. The other guy made two out of the three. Let's see what Haskins does here. He makes three of three. Made all three. Four and a half seconds left for Western Michigan. Martin from half court. Oh, Almost my. got it to go. But that'll do it for the first half. And what a first half it was for the Saginaw Valley State Cardinals. They led by as many as 10 in this first half. They'll head to the locker room with a six-point lead here in Kalamazoo. Head coach Randy Baruth, Saginaw Valley State, hoping to hold on for an upset over a Division I team. Saginaw Valley State coming up from the Division II level. But they have come in prepared for this game. Shot clock under 10. Witt's working the baseline against McMillan. To the opposite side, Hoskins knocks down the three. Well, it looked like they had a good stop possibly there, and the ball kicked out to Hoskins, and he buried that jump shot. That's a tough way to start the half. Hoskins now with 12. It's a nine-point lead for the Cardinals. Adrian Martin thought about the three. Mar Norman Jr. had 14 in that first half for the Broncos. Now another turnover. It's never good to jump to pass. You jump to shoot. 12th turnover for Western Michigan. Working for Singh. He goes up strong and finishes off the glass. 11-point lead for Saginaw Valley State. A 5-0 run to open up the second half. Yeah, that was really good patience on the part of Singh. And a timeout. Half. Played with energy, you know. They got a they got a little bit of a break there on that kickout jump shot by Hoskins. It looked like the Broncos were going to get a stop there, but uh, nevertheless, they're taking advantage of it. Lamar Norman Jr. That three doesn't fall. Offensive rebound, Culp, and he's whistled for the travel. Thirteenth turnover for Western Michigan. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's the, the basic problem uh, for the Broncos. And it makes it tough if you turn the ball over to try to come from behind that way. Definitely a sense of urgency on the part of the Broncos on defense now. Uh, we'll see what, how Saginaw responds. Singh into the post and rolls it home. A 7-0 run to open the second half for Saginaw Valley State. Their largest lead of the night at 13 points. Well, Singh just made two nice moves to score two baskets here early in the second half. JoJo Freeman. On the baseline, Martin. Lamar Norman Jr. hits the corner three, and boy, did Western Michigan need that. That was a nice inside-outside pass. I think the game plan should include Norman here as we go through the second half. As he's really hot. So that is now 14 for Lamar Norman Jr. Hoskins trying to respond. He can't hit. They feed Norman once again. Round a screen from Titus Wright. Uh, Off target there. Yeah, that was a contested jump shot there. And sometimes when you have to dribble many times to get the a shot it, it makes it difficult to, to sink it Lano Smith over for Singh that's too strong and Freeman with the rebound Broncos looking to run they virtually they had no fast break points tonight the Broncos Saginaw's done a nice job of getting back Titus Wright in the post. The hook falls. Okay, they got that ball deep in the lane. That's a good sign. What is needed now are defensive stops without fouling. Back into single digits. Ten on the shot clock for Smith. Hoskins guarded tightly by Norman. He hoists 
And left it short, out of bounds. It's back to Western Michigan. Solid defense there on the part of the Broncos. Really gave up, not a very good shot at all. Freddie McIntosh and Elijah Harrison check back in for Saginaw Valley State. Apply a little bit of pressure in the backcourt. Something that Randy Baruth likes to do, play the full 94 feet. Well, he's making some substitutions, too. He's got some fresher legs in there right now, and I think he's trying to save, you know, his, his uh, main player some, some energy here so they have it going down the stretch. Culp outside. Drives the right side. Out of bounds. Last touch by Saginaw Valley State. That'll take us to a timeout. Saginaw Valley State ahead by eight, but Western Michigan on the comeback trail at University Arena. Around his ankle, he may be done for the night. Looks very much like that, yeah. He's uh, got his sweatpants on. Looks like, a, looks like a bad ankle. He had seven points in the first half. Freeman for three, he hits. You know, it's not like the, the Broncos are shooting poorly, but they just don't get it to enough shots. Freeman with six. Smith takes a hard foul. Good try by Delano here. Back door. Actually, it's a back door cut. Help defense got there, but got there a little bit late. First foul on Josiah Freeman. Sophomore from Virginia. Last season. Shot just under 42% from beyond the arc. Made a couple of threes tonight. That's been the recipe for Western Michigan. The Broncos are 8 for 14 from three-point land. But it's a bit surprising that Western Michigan hasn't been able to score more on the inside. Yeah, that is surprising. And what is also surprising is that Saginaw scores points, but really uh, Delano Smith has not really had a great night. He's been kind of quiet. Uh, now, down the stretch of this game, he might pick up his uh, his offensive performance here a little bit, but he's not pressing the issue. He does have seven. Freeman will try another three and knocks down another. Right. He's, he's basically keeping the Broncos close here. It's a four-point game. JoJo Freeman has nine. Tyler Witts whistled for the travel. And all of a sudden, the momentum starting to swing the way of Western Michigan. Yeah, that was a, that was a good stop there. Titus Wright moved his feet and uh, caused a turnover. Energy starting to come back inside the University Arena. Hastings. For Lamar Norman Jr., another three for Lamar Norman Jr. He has 17. But see, that shot came off a pass. It came off a nice cut by Lamar to get himself free. And the, the feeder hit him right in the shot pocket. Good shot. Western Michigan within one, but a great response from Delano Smith. Look out. And now Harrison nearly caused a turnover. It's out of bounds, though. It will stay with Western Michigan. It wouldn't surprise me if Lionel Smith starts looking now for his uh, offensive opportunities so as we go down the stretch of this ball game, He realizes that uh, they don't have Maurice Barnett on the floor, so I think he'll try to pick up the slack a little bit. Western Michigan is four for their last four from the field. Broncos have trailed by as many as 13 tonight, but it's a one-possession game. Lamar Norman Jr., he has done it again! That was a specific set where they were trying to get Lamar a jump shot. He came off a double down screen, squared up, no dribble, shot. His sixth three of the night ties it up. Now Smith drives and draws a foul. Yep, he came off that double down screen, faded a little bit, gave him a little bit extra uh, space. Lamar doesn't need a lot of space. Beautiful shot. Last two trips down the floor, Delano Smith is pressing the issue. He had uh, 
two hard drives to his right hand. Scored on one and got fouled on this latest one. Smith has nine points. Looking to get into double figures, and he hits the first free throw. So Lamar Norman Jr. is now six for eight from beyond the arc. Doesn't get much better than that. No, no, no. <laughs> you wonder how long you can, you know, sometimes percentages start catching up with you. I hope they don't for his sake. Geez, I just noticed Delano Smith's kaleidoscopic shoes here. <laughs> Those are pretty neat. Yeah. Two-point lead for Saginaw Valley State. Why not give it back to Lamar Norman Jr.? Nice. Good. Back Kick outside. Out. Norman. And that's off the back iron. Cardinals settle it down. Still clinging on to the lead with over 13 minutes remaining. Driving the lane. Battle for the rebound. Wits puts it back up and in. Boy, those second chance points can kill you. They look like they had a good stop, but just couldn't wrap it up. Tyler Wits has six points. Hastings on the outside. Into some traffic. Out for Freeman. That three doesn't fall. Kind of, Broncos are kind of falling in love with the three ball shot now. That was the 19th attempt for Western Michigan from three. They have made 11 of them. You can't be too reliant on it. Now Singh was wide open. Couldn't score from in close. Shot got affected late. And it's back with Western Michigan. Yarno Palmstra checks back in for Saginaw Valley State. Gus Etchison comes on for the Broncos. Also Malik McMillan back on. So perhaps McMillan maybe trying to get him going in the post. Yeah, yeah he's shown some ability there to, to score down low. You have McMillan and also Hastings. Two forwards on the floor for the Broncos. Freeman in the corner. He knocks it down. Inside, outside action. That ball goes in the hole a lot when you get that rhythm going. Josiah Freeman now with 12. He's four for five from three-point land. Freeman and Norman Jr. have combined to make 10 threes. Oh, but what a, a response shot. from Delano that, Smith. That was good, well pressured by Lamar Norman, but Delano just went up and shot it. Now Etchison nearly lost it. Hastings tries a three, left it short, a rebound to Singh, and then a reach in foul. Foul goes on JoJo Freeman. His second picked up the foul there, but JoJo Freeman has been a big part of the comeback for Western Michigan. Floor. Yeah, it hasn't been easy. You got to give Saginaw a lot of credit. Every time the Broncos make a run at them, they respond. Malik McMillan poked that ball out of bounds. Well, we'll see if the two nights in a row hurt uh, Saginaw Valley. They played last night against Olivet at home. And uh, I'm sure exerted some energy because you got to to win a college basketball game. We'll see if they got enough going down the stretch here. It was an 11-point win for the Cardinals last night. McIntosh and a foul on Etchison. That's his first. It's the fourth on Western Michigan as a team. Something to keep an eye on. Saginaw Valley State has not committed a foul yet. And the fourth on Western Michigan. McIntosh with eight on the timer. Little tie up for the rebound. Diving on the floor. 
And Western Michigan fell on it and was able to get a timeout called. No, I think or, uh, I think it was just their ball. It went off of Saginaw out of bounds, I believe. Oh, got it. But uh, it showed you how important it is. That each possession, those guys are going after that loose ball, both teams. Here's Culp at the top of the key. Move. McMillan backing his way in against Witts. And Witts touched it out of bounds, but was playing some nice defense on that possession. He sure was. Uh, really he had a chance to you know, grab the ball, but just couldn't corral it. So got eight seconds on the clock for the Broncos to take a shot. That sim will inbound into Culp. Norman makes another three. Well, he, he really likes the University of Arena rims, I tell you. Seven for ten from beyond the arc. He's tied a career high with 23. It's a one-point game. Smith into the post and gets the roll. I don't think they've discovered a guy who can handle uh, Delano yet. I don't, I don't, you know, that time it was Josiah Freeman. He pretty much drove him right down into the paint. Smith has 16. McMillan, baseline jumper doesn't fall. The rebound to McIntosh. Under 10 minutes to go, a three-point lead for Saginaw Valley State. Now we got uh, Lamar Norman on Smith. Smith tries a three. Bobbled the rebound. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Cardinals. Tyreek Singh. James Tui check back in. So take a look at the replay on this scramble for the rebound. Yeah, that definitely went off of Garrett. But good, good hustle, I'll tell you that. Malik McMillan will head to the bench. I think Brian, the Western's going to have to earn this victory if they're going to come from behind here because I don't think Saginaw is going to give it to him. Etchison for Norman. This three doesn't fall. And hit the shot clock. It would have been his eighth of the night. Looked good, didn't it? I mean, when he left his hand. He's on the right path. This time it didn't go down. Oh my. What a move to get to the basket. Oh Trey Garrett. And the lead back up to five for Saginaw Valley State. Etchison, elbow three. That rolls out. Garrett will slow it down for the Cardinals. Eight and a half minutes to go. Seems to me Saginaw has been driving the ball more in the second half than in the first. Dewey to Witz, backing his way against Titus Wright. And a foul. That goes on Titus Wright, his second. It's the fifth on Western Michigan as a team. Yeah, there's almost a hook on the part of Woods there, but uh, he got the call instead. Tyler Witz has seven tonight. Adrian Martin comes back on for the Broncos. Trey Garrett and Delano Smith come back on for Saginaw Valley State. Witz makes both free throws. A seven-point lead with just over eight minutes to play for Saginaw Valley State. Martin on the outside. For Freeman, under 10 on the shot clock. Out of bounds, another turnover for Western Michigan. It's a 6-0 run for Saginaw Valley State. The Cardinals looking to pull off the upset in Kalamazoo. The first half, how has Saginaw Valley State been able to do it? 
uh, offensive execution. Uh, you know, they, 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 they're scoring in a variety of ways. They've gotten to the free throw line. They've hit some threes, but they've driven the ball well. And they've taken better care of the basketball. Smith looking to drive. That rolled out. And an offensive rebound. Great effort there from Trey Garrett. Cardinals will reset things. Shot clock under 10. Smith, fall away baseline jumper is short. And Max Smith with the rebound and then a reach in foul on Trey Garrett. Why well, Garrett is an aggressive player though, man. He has been around that ball at both ends, willing to sacrifice his body for the cause. He, he's provided some good minutes for Saginaw off the bench. He was a first team All-State player at Bridgeport High School in Saginaw. Playing for his hometown school. Lamar Norman Jr. already with 23. Max Smith in the corner. Can't hit. And then an over the back foul on Titus Wright. That is the third on Wright. Six on Western Michigan as a team. Yeah, that was a good shot. Uh, Norman drew the defense and then it puts it out to his buddy Max Smith. Just couldn't hit the jumper. But everything seems to be on the perimeter for the Broncos. Here's Singh guarded tightly by Smith. Now Delano Smith driving. Blocking foul. What a play by Delano Smith as the basket is good of an opportunity for a three-point play. Boy, he is, he is a strong driver, Delano Smith. Here he comes. I don't know how he got that to go. <laughs> I mean, he was well, on a knee. I think he just threw it up there to be honest with you. And that's what you're supposed to do. Who knows what might happen? In the end, the ball went through the basket. And that's now the fourth foul on Titus Wright. It's a nine-point lead. Delano Smith at the line. And a foul on Garrett as he reached over the back. That's his second. Now that time his aggressiveness uh, resulted in a foul. But at least he's going for the ball. i got to hand it to him. So Western Michigan trails by nine. Six and a half minutes to go. How can they come back? Well, you would like to think that through uh, getting to the free throw line a little bit, scoring a little bit inside, not only relying on three balls. You know, that, that's uh, that's a that can be fool's gold. Max Smith. That's more like it. Tries oh. to drive, and he does draw some contact. Foul goes on Tyler Witts. That's his first. Yeah, it was the second uh, shot opportunity that he got the foul. Mac found himself in the trees there. And, and this is good, you know. You, 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 you can come back with the clock stop if you can get to the free throw line. Mac Smith, very experienced player coming from Eastern Illinois. Averaged nearly 11 points per game last year. He's a second team all Ohio Valley. And he brings the Broncos back within seven points with six minutes to go. Tui. Ten on the shot clock for McIntosh. Guarded by Hastings. Step back jumper off target. Lamar Norman Jr. with a rebound. Good defensive possession by the Broncos. See if they can convert on this end. Oh, that's a long shot. No. Nope. Hastings left it short. Yeah, there's no rhythm to that play. I mean, this, uh, if it comes off a ball reversal jump shot, that's a little different. And now wide open, but what a block by Adrian Martin. But then Garrett is right there with the hustle offensive rebound and put back. 
Garrett in the right place at the right time. The lead back to nine for the Cardinals with five minutes to play. Max Smith, elbow jumper doesn't go. Garrett with the rebound. Randy Baruth telling his team to settle it down. Ahead by nine with under five minutes to go. Dewey for Wits, top of the key, three, he hits it! A 12-point lead for Saginaw Valley State with four and a half minutes left. Yeah. All smiles on the, with the guys in red. That Timeout. A, that was a beautiful executed play here where they uh, ran the guard off the back screen and Witt stepped back for a wide open jump shot. Usually the guy who sets the screen is the guy that's wide open. So the lead is at 12 yep. on for a victory against a Division I opponent in the state of Michigan. Lamar Norman Jr. gets some contact. Didn't get the bucket to fall, but he'll have two free throws. That would have been nice had that one gone, but uh, he can still pick up a couple of points with the st clock stop. Fourth foul on Trey Garrett. Mar Norman Jr. now has 24. That's a new career high. Been a huge addition to this Western Michigan team, and we'll now see the Broncos apply a full court press, trailing by 10. Oh Dewey my. McIntosh oh, hits yes. the short jumper. That was a hard shot. That's a tough angle there. It really was. For Hastings, he gets the bucket plus the foul. Nice move by uh, Marquise Hastings. However, you can't trade baskets now. You got to get stops to, in order to make a comeback. That's the second foul on Tyler Witts. Hey, there's a nice attack right here. Hastings with a chance to complete the three-point play. Misses the free throw. Nearly an offensive rebound. And a foul on Western Michigan reaching in. That's the second foul on Marquise Hastings, and it sends Saginaw Valley State to the free throw line for a one and one. James Tui, the senior from Australia. And he hits the front end. Head coach Randy Baruth looking for a huge win for his program. This would certainly build a lot of confidence going into the rest of the season. No doubt. No doubt. Broncos trail by 12 with under four minutes to go. Fifteen on the shot clock for Lamar Norman Jr. Martin in the corner, shot clock under 10, feeds Hastings, spinning his way in the post. He's blocked by Wits, only four on the shot clock. It's nearly stolen away, and it is. The Cardinals will settle it down with under three and a half to go. Cardinals were swarming the ball there, boy. Great defensive effort from Saginaw Valley State, ahead by 12. Delano Smith hoists a three and oh, buries my. it. That may be the dagger for the Cardinals. They lead by 15 with three minutes to play. Delano with the dagger, perhaps. 
Lamar Norman Jr. trying to respond out of bounds. Last touch by Western Michigan. Saginaw Valley State leads it by 15 with under three minutes to go. What a night for Delano Smith. He's got 21. Uh, you know, forced it. He's just taking what the defense has given him. Six of 11 from the field. Two and a half minutes to go. Saginaw Valley State content to drain the shot clock. Five on the timer. Smith has to put it up and left it well short. A shot clock violation. 2.20 to go. Desperation time for Western Michigan. They have to imagine they'll be firing up a barrage of threes here. Yeah, Saginaw was willing to take that ball all the way down to the shot, uh, shot clock, even if they did get the violation. Martin tries to drive. Witt swats it out. Western just simply will run out of, uh, you know, opportunities uh, in terms of possessions here. It's 2-11 left. They're going to have to score in down their area of possession and turn them over. Adrian Martin trying to find a pass. Norman lost it. Taken away by Trey Garrett, and he is fouled by Max Smith. Well, Saginaw is just playing a, a, just a really sound basketball game. You know, they're not hurting themselves. They've been tenacious on defense. Yeah, they've given up some three balls to the Broncos, but that's about it. Uh, they haven't fouled uh, hardly at all tonight. They've taken good care of the basketball. Uh, I think they have a total of six turnovers, uh, which is a good total uh, on a visitor's floor. And when you're the visitor. And so, yeah, uh, you got to hand it to Saginaw. They played a pretty darn complete ball game, and they lost one of their best players to injury. They played the second half without Mo Barnett, who came in averaging just under 16 points a game. And not only that, Western Michigan made a really valiant comeback effort in the second half, but Saginaw Valley State weathered that storm and built up an even larger lead. Yes. And, and this guy here, Trey Garrett, contributed mightily. I think he got a chance to have more floor time when Barnett got injured, and he took advantage of it. Titus Wright spinning his way against Wits. Unable to finish. Cardinals will hold it. It's a 7-0 run for Saginaw Valley State. Western Michigan won for their last 11 from the field. Yeah, it looks like Saginaw is going to win going away. What a accomplishment for this Division II program. Smith, why not? Putting the icing on the cake. Delano Smith has 24. I think they're going to check to see if it's a, a three-pointer or a two-pointer. Yeah, it's a little tough to tell there. Regardless, the lead will either be 20 or 19. Yes. It's uh, almost academic except for Delano's scoring average. I got to believe he's going to have a really uh, superb senior year, Delano Smith. Looks like he has a lot of tools. Playing and really savvy. well tonight. Let's take another look. They did rule it a two as it looked like that right foot may have grazed the line there. But Western Michigan, we do have to remember playing without B. Artis White, who was going to be such a huge part of this team. How do you move forward after this for your head coach, Clayton Bates? Uh, I, I know one thing. They're going to have to play a, a, a more aggressive style of basketball. I think they were... Saginaw was the aggressor tonight, uh, and Western was too passive. They got to find some way to score points inside the paint or around the paint, at least inside the arc. 
and you know they're just going to have to go back to work they're, they're a work in progress unfortunately now they're going to have to get prepared to play uh, iowa on monday night on the road a big 10 team and uh that's going to be a tall tall order that foul is on max smith You have to think maybe Coach Bates going into that game against Iowa after the game against Michigan State where, where the Broncos struggled, have to say, hey, look at what happened on your home floor. Yeah. We can go to yeah. Iowa City and beat these guys. Well, uh, you know, the one thing you want to do is whoever you're playing, you want to make progress as a, as a unit. You have to focus on your own development, on your own team's development, you know, uh, and not worry so much about the opposition at least for a little while until you get your feet underneath you. A lot of these guys, you know, we've got so many new guys on the roster. They've never played with each other. Roles still have to be determined. And so, uh, you know, you, you, you can't despair. You just got to get back and work tomorrow in the practice floor. And there's plenty of season left for the Broncos to improve, but have to give so much credit to head coach Randy Baruth and the Saginaw Valley State team coming out of the road with a tremendous effort as you said just played such a clean basketball game really great basketball tonight it, it, they, they really didn't allow the door open for the for the broncos to come back and take control of the game that's to their credit freeman hits the jumper makes it an 18 point game Cardinals just dribbling out some clock. Have to imagine that'll be a pretty fun bus ride back to Saginaw. Jumper off the mark there. Max Smith quickly brings it the other way. Gets the lay in to make it a 16 point game. Harrison trying to get past midcourt. He is fouled. So he'll head to the free throw line for two. The Big Macs or Qdoba or whatever they have for a post-game meal is going to taste <laughs> awfully good tonight. That's for I'm too. sure it will. Absolutely. And this was a team that last season went 5-12. and 12. They did make it to the GLIAC semifinals. But... They split a couple of games against Division II NCAA tournament teams in their first two, and now a win against Western Michigan, a Division I opponent. And you have to think, other teams in the GLIAC are going to see this score and say, whoa, that's, that's right. going to be an impressive team for that's Saginaw exactly. Valley State. And, you know, I think, I think uh, although they've got some new players, they seem to be less in a state of flux than, say, Western's program right now. I mean, they knew... The roles were clearly delineated when they started this game, you know, and those guys played their role. Played them well. Final seconds winding down. Saginaw Valley State with the upset. The Division II school comes on the road and takes down Western Michigan 80-63 to in Kalamazoo. What a win for the Cardinals. So for our producer, Anthony DiCarlo, my partner, Joe Hacklin, I'm Connor Klingen saying so long from University Arena. The final score, Saginaw Valley State 80, Western Michigan 63. This has been a presentation of ESPN.